It's a movement, not a campaign. Don't let Hillary leave you protected with nothing but a phone. The production and placement of ads is a, is a central part of a campaign effort. I'm Donald Trump and I approve this message. The content of an advertisement or the messages that a campaign is using is critical to how they are reaching voters. Especially now that we have ever more precise voter data available, it's become much easier to really hyper-target particular groups of voters whom you want to see particular messages. Please welcome the 45th President of the United States of America, Donald Trump. The NRA spent tens of millions of dollars in 2016 helping elect President Trump. And the reason that the NRA was allowed to spend unlimited amounts of money supporting President Trump's election was with the understanding that its spending was independent. But what we found is that both the NRA and the Trump campaign were using the same network of vendors to place their ads. This means that the NRA's spending in recent election cycles uh, could be considered coordinated and this would violate campaign finance law. So our investigation of this issue has been going on for, for a number of months and started last July when some great reporting by, by Mike Spees at the Trace and Politico uncovered the first layer to this scheme. The NRA appears to have used a complicated secret shell operation effectively, one layer that uh, designed and produced the ads, and then a second layer of shell corporations that then actually place those ads on TV stations. Josh Hawley will defend our rights, always. And our research has shown that the scheme did not stop in 2016. We identified at least two Senate campaigns in the 2018 cycle that the NRA appears to have reprised its scheme in. For years, the NRA had been contracting with OnMessage, a media consulting firm, to produce its ads. And then starting in 2014, it began contracting with another firm called Starboard. And Starboard appears to have no legitimate presence. And as we looked more closely, a pattern emerged where the NRA was contracting with Starboard to place, place and produce its ads, and the candidates that the NRA was supporting were contracting with OnMessage. We are going to keep on winning. You're going to get on your side a Montana fighter. We had additional evidence of coordination in the Montana Senate race. When Montana to U.S. Senate candidate Matt Rosendale was caught on tape, telling a supporter that the NRA was going to be coming into his race with ads about the Supreme Court. Outside groups started spending on your behalf? Yes, and I fully expect the NRA is going to come. The uh, Supreme Court um, confirmations are big. That's, that's what sent the NRA over the line. Just weeks later, the NRA began spending in the Montana U.S. Senate race with ads talking about the Supreme Court. In all three votes on Supreme Court justices, Tester sided with Chuck Schumer and the anti-gun liberal left. So in addition, we were able to identify that there was a second layer of coordination to this scheme. The NRA was also coordinating with the candidates that it was supporting on the placement of ads through a second network of ad placement vendors. And in some cases, we saw that the same employees of a firm called National Media were placing ads on behalf of candidates as were placing ads on behalf of the NRA supporting those same candidates. It looks like a corporation called Red Eagle Media Group is placing the NRA's ads, and it looks like an organization called American Media and Advocacy Group is placing the campaign's ads. But in reality, those seem to be effectively shells of national media, and they share the same employees, they're at the same address, and they don't have, appear to have any sort of separate public presence. A defense that you will typically get in a situation where a campaign and an outside group might be using the same vendor is that there was a firewall and that you had a separate group of employees working for the campaign and then you had a firewall between them and the other employees working on the other group's ads and campaigns. But that argument really completely falls apart if you have the exact same individual signing for ads for both groups at once. 
That is some of the clearest evidence of coordination that I've ever seen. It's impossible to imagine that the individual person who was placing the NRA's pro-Trump ads and the Trump campaign's own ads established a firewall in their brain. Once the Campaign Legal Center became aware of the NRA's illegal coordination scheme, we filed four different complaints with the FEC, along with Giffords, a gun safety organization, asking for an investigation into the NRA's illegal coordinated support for seven different political campaigns. The Federal Election Commission, or FEC, is the federal government agency charged with administering and enforcing federal campaign finance law. And for much of its history, it functioned reasonably well. Unfortunately, over the last decade, the Federal Election Commission has consistently failed at that duty with which it was entrusted. And it repeatedly fails to open investigations and to enforce the law when violations have occurred. It's been mired in partisan deadlock. The administrative complaints uh, charging NRA coordination with the campaigns were filed by the Campaign Legal Center and by the Giffords Advocacy Organization. We've now waited 120 days and more uh, under the law, the FEC had a duty to act. It hasn't acted, so we have to go to court. We have to sue them. In this lawsuit, the plaintiff will be the Giffords organization and the lawyers will be the Campaign Legal Center action. The FEC has an enormous responsibility to protect the integrity of our democracy and to protect the integrity of our elections. And if the FEC is not enforcing the law against even clear violations like this one, it sends a signal that wealthy donors and political operatives can buy influence over our democracy as they please, regardless of what the laws say. And then our political system is increasingly tilted towards the interests of a handful of wealthy donors. When you put all of the pieces together and you look at all of the evidence, you see what appears to be a pretty clear picture of deliberate, illegal, coordinated activity. When the Federal Election Commission fails to enforce campaign finance law, even in the face of overwhelming evidence, that sends a message to other groups that they can push the legal envelope and get away with it. 